Hello all, welcome to Nerd Sheet, episode 4. My name's Gabriel, I'm right here with the man, the myth, the legend, Marlon. What up y'all? Glad to be here, excited, super stoked for today's show. Absolutely, absolutely. Today we're doing another top 10 countdown for ya. Marlon, let the people know what today's countdown is about. Top 10 greatest factions, man. Top uh, 10 greatest factions. Absolutely. So for those of you who don't know, factions uh, slash stables would be groups in wrestling um, that that uh, had an impact, I guess you would say. Not just tag teams, but more of a group, a, a crew of your, your folks, right? Yes. Something yes. like that. It was very tough list to come up with. Um, very tough list. Blood, sweat, and tears to make this list. Mostly sweat because it's hot. It is hot. All right. Um, you ready to get through this countdown? Let's do it. Let's. Yeah! <laughs> Coming in at number 10. You know who they are. We know who they are. They're the New Day. Hello. Don't be sour. Really, uh, they breathe new life into this whole new era, I guess you would say, of wrestling with the whole tag team division. Um, with their tag team title reign lasting, I don't know, how long has it lasted? I really don't know. A real long time. A really long time. We don't even know. But they made number 10. If you don't like it, that sucks. They're number 10. Make your own list. Coming in at number 9, it's the Wyatt family. The Wyatts. Wow, they... Really, these new groups right now have really made an impact in the business. I am almost lost for words. They have made literally like, I think it's, I want to say one of the, my top favorites. Just their impact, their entrance alone just creates this whole atmosphere of fear in the ring, Definitely. in the entire arena. You know, and they have the whole crowd behind them, whether they're heels or, or their faces, you have the entire crowd with their cell phone flashlights just in the audience. They just they to me they they, they, they are the new fear. I like the, the, the their their way of grasping you with with just their their music hitting. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Coming in at number eight, it's the corporation. Oh, yes, you remember them? Yes, absolutely. I remember. All right, them if you too. guys don't remember the corporation, they were run by. Basically, what it is the authority today. So back then, it was Vince McMahon really running the show. His he had the corporation, which represented obviously you know corporate higher power uh, bosses, I guess you would say, and they really ran shit. They ran it. They did pretty much. You had the likes of The Rock part of the corporation at one point. You had Triple H part of the corporation at one point, and pretty much they did whatever Vince's bidding was. You know, you also had Vince's kids, Shane and Stephanie, in there, in the mix. And pretty much the entire persona of the corporation was power. And they had a huge impact, especially during the Attitude Era. Coming in at number seven, Four Horsemen. The Four Horsemen. You had Ric Flair, you had Ole Anderson, you had Arn Anderson, and you had Tully Blanchard. Wow! You know, they didn't really have too much of an impact on me personally because, you know, they're, they're a little old school, I guess you would say. I'm a little new school, as you can tell. I'm awesome. and um, But they did have an impact on the business as a whole. You know, they were really the original stable, I guess you would say. I think they, they are the one that started. This, yeah, this whole group uh, persona kind of a thing in the wrestling business. And for that, they definitely should deserve a spot on everyone's list. So that's why they made ours. Woo! Four horsemen. Coming in at number six, you had Nexus. Now, for those of you who don't know, um, Nexus originated from NXT. It was a lot of the original NXT stars, and um, they formed a group and pretty much invaded Raw and just started kicking, kicking ass and taking ass. names. It was amazing. Coming in uh, on a, a live show, Raw, it was 
basically all a nexus versus just one man, John Cena. Completely destroying the place. I mean, destroying the ring, destroying the outside of the ring, the putting John Cena through tables. It was it was it was, it was uh, pretty gruesome to see, especially for this PG era. But they uh, really tore the place apart. There was uh, they I've never seen Raw take that much of a beating. Coming in at number five, Nation of Domination. The Nation of Domination. And just like their name, they pretty much dominated during the Attitude Era. It was amazing. You know, you started by the man, uh, Ron Simmons, going by the name Farouk at that time. Yeah. You know, you had the likes of uh, um, D'Lo Brown in there. You had uh, Mark Henry in there. Uh, you had Godfather, I believe, at one point. Yep. And of course, you had the birth of Rocky Malvia turning into The Rock. That's basically what started his career, the Nation of Domination. It was a good impact on him. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, all he wanted, he said, he told the client, he said, Vince, just give me a couple minutes on the mic to do my thing. And they let him take the mic on one episode of Raw, and he just ran with it. And ever since then, there's no stopping The Rock. I smell what's cooking. Do you smell what's cooking? Smell like burnt fish. Let's get some food. Coming in at number four. Who is it? You know who it is. No, you don't, because we haven't said it yet. Let them know what number four is. The Shield. Shield. Badass group, yeah. Shield, really formed by three NXT people. You had Seth Rollins, you had Roman Reigns, and you had Dean Ambrose. So, together, these three formed the Shield, and they pretty much just showed up one day on an episode of Raw and started beating the shit out of someone. And no one really knew what their purpose was, right? No one really knew. They didn't really have a purpose. Their purpose, well, I guess... Eventually, pretty much what they said was best for business. Yes. And they just kept going and ran with it. They've had a huge impact and pretty much brought back this whole attitude towards, like, just, we're gonna... It doesn't matter what, like, no titles involved. We're just going to kick ass and take names. To me, they're kind of like the modern day, um, like a modern day cross between APA and NWO. Because APA was like the protection agency. Good call. And NWO was like that weird kind of attitude, kind of new world order kind of a thing. Shield. Number three is Evolution. Yeah. Now, Evolution, of course, started by Triple H. You know, he wanted to um, take the new generation and take the old generation, combine them. So he took Ray Orton, who at that time was really an up-and-comer. He took Ric Flair with his wisdom and experience. And he also took Batista, who was also kind of newish at the time. Combined everyone with himself and formed Evolution. Amazing, amazing group. At one point, they held every title on Raw. Which were? Ray Norton was the Intercontinental Champion. Yep. You had Ric Flair and Batista as the Tag Team Champions. And you had Triple H as the World Heavyweight Champion. They were a badass group. Um, did, no one wanted to mess with them. And if you did, 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 you didn't really get anything out of it. Mm-hmm. Of course, it was ultimately where... They broke up and they all just kept betraying each other. But whatever. The time they had was amazing and legendary. So, coming in at number two, D-Generation X. D-Generation X. What a group. Wow. I don't think there will ever be another D-Generation X ever in in this world. They were amazing. Triple H started it. Um, you had Shawn Michaels in there, who at that time was the biggest superstar on the roster. In, in the peak of his career. You had Triple H, Shawn Michaels, you had China, the most dominant women's wrestler R. to I. date. R.I.P. Absolutely. Then you had, of course, Badass Billy Gunn, you had Road Dogg, um, X-Pac at one point was part of them. It was, it's, and their impact, their goofiness, and, and it, the way they would mess with Vince McMahon, and just oh, the impact they, they had. Him oh, like Right. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. 
they were just the goofiness with them was just amazing. That I think that's what started the the Monday Night Wars when uh oh when yeah they, when they invaded their uh, biggest impact was when they went and tried to invade WCW. Amazing, amazing impact they had on the wrestling business forever. <laughs> Now, the very last one, the absolute number one greatest stable on our list. You guessed it, the NWO. Oof. Now, close. the reason this one made number one, at least I think so, based on all the votes we did, it came out number one. But I think because of the impact they had on the wrestling business, it felt like the world stood still for one second when you found out that Hulk Hogan was the third member of the Outsiders, who were, of course, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall. And it was, you took, at that, in those days, it was almost impossible to see a face like Hogan turn heel. Everybody loved Hulk Hogan. Hulk like, Hogan. People, like, kids, like, grown-ups looked up to him. And that impact alone, just, this, it shook up the company, you know, in such a way in the mid-90s that, at that point, WCW finally beat WWE in ratings. During the Monday Night Wars. That's what really pushed them over. And that is why NWO is number one on our list. And that's our top ten list. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, subscribe. Tell a friend. Comments Please. on this video. Let us know what your top ten is. So we can argue about it. Because it's fun to argue. In a friendly way. Marlon, let the people know where they can find you online. Find me on Twitter, please. MMendoza underscore 92. If you, don't, if you didn't listen, it's on the link below. Absolutely. The link. It's right around here. Right in this area. The link. Like right here. My belly I'll put the is. link is. Alright. Find me online, of course, at NerdSheet. All social media is at NerdSheet. Snapchat at NerdSheet. You can email me at NerdSheet at gmail.com. Any suggestions for a, a future top 10? Future top 10, future episodes, future reviews. I'll be doing a X-Men review soon for Apocalypse, so stay tuned for that. Hope you enjoyed this. Share, subscribe, like it. Nerd sheet out. You're supposed to walk up and get away.